And I want to start out just by, by posing a very simple question. And that when we go home and we look around our communities and we look around our countries and we look around our world, what do we see? I mean, we're at a time of massive unmet need. We're at a time of limited budgets. And we're, yet we're at a time where there are some great nonprofits. We might not have every single one that we need in each of our cities, but there are great organizations out there. So now it's really incumbent on us is there is this chasm. We've got challenges at this level. Okay, we've got the scale at which we're currently addressing those challenges at this level. So I think I'm gonna go back to kind of the call that Jeff made. What happens if everybody steps up to the plate? And I think that's really the question that we wanna ask and that I wanna focus on today. I mean, every one of us is passionate about what we do. And if we think back as to why, well, at some point on our journey, we got connected to somebody working on an issue that we were passionate about. And that gave us more energy and more power and more network to go and be able to do the next thing. And so to me, SVP is really kind of this crucible for social impact because it allows us to get connected to people and causes that we're most passionate about. And so I really do think of it as a journey. And I really think that you know, the journey begins with each of us. So if we think about ourselves and we think about the energy we have today for this type of change versus the energy we had when we started, it's gone up like this. And it's gone up like this because we're this reservoir of potential. And we've kind of taken the first step. We've kind of taken the next step. And now it's really time to kind of step back and say, you know, what could be beyond that? So I wanted to share a little bit about my journey. I got started in 2005, really, in, in kind of the social change venture philanthropy space. I had sold a company, and I was reading magazines, searching the internet, and there was an article in Business Week in, in 2005 on venture philanthropy. And it, and it mentioned SVP. So I decided, you know, I'll join. It sounds really interesting. And I remember I went to the first couple of meetings, and it was kind of like this. I look around the room, and all these people know way more than I do. And I'm trying to think to myself, what could I do? What value could I add here? And I really couldn't think of anything. So I just decided that I would start small. And I found this one organization that SV2 had funded in Silicon Valley called Reading Partners. And they really only had one full-time employee at the time. And I thought, geez, they only got one person. They're definitely going to need some help. There's got to be something I can do. So I just started there, and it was that experiential learning that kind of gave me the experience and the confidence then to work with a larger nonprofit. And then that gave me the experience to work with a larger one. And then that really tells you, hey, this model works. You know, this dog can hunt. And that got me excited. Well, geez, then I want to play a leadership role in my SVP. And then I'd like to play a leadership role in the network and in the field. So it's just this stepwise process. And, and as what I found out is that I learned along the way, and I was reflecting for what I wanted to say here, is that two big lessons for me. One is start small. That's OK. Just jump in the pool, but have no limits. There shouldn't be any limits. And secondly, what we're doing here is so much more than philanthropy. When I look back at what I've seen that we've done, we've built great companies. They just happen to be nonprofits. Collectively, we've created tens of thousands of jobs in this room. And they're not manufacturing line jobs. They're the kind of passion-rich careers that anybody would long to have. And we're on the path to helping solve some of society's most vexing problems. So I think that's some of the things on my personal journey. And then as I reflect and try to connect the dots of what I've seen here today, you know, what's the journey that the field is on? And I really do think that you know, what Jeff you know, started in Cincinnati and what FSG attached as a name, Collective Impact, resonates everywhere we go. I mean, we all know that. If we Google philanthropy, it says collective action for the public good. I mean, it's about the collective. So as I look at this, I think to myself, you know, what have we learned when we look at what we've done in our cities, when we look at what we've done in our networks, what we've looked at what we've done in all these organizations? And if we look at Jeff's framework, what that says is there are key inflection points to any problem that we need to be sure as a society that we intervene at. And we need to place bets. And we've probably been placing too many bets, billions of drops in millions of buckets, if you've read that book. So, I mean, what this is really all about is placing fewer, bigger, and longer bets. It's going back to Jeff's thing. Whatever we do, we have to outlast any political administration. We have to be there for the decade. We have to be there for the generation. And I think that's what's the power of this movement and what we're talking about. 
and not every solution do we have in every city. So as we think about what do we need to continue to go deep in our own communities, we need to continue to build the organizations that we have, but where there is a world-class solution that doesn't exist in our city, how can we import that? How can we really build up this framework to act for good now? So it's really all about this kind of collective impact to me, and I've had a personal experience in just seeing how this unfolds. And as I said, I started with, it was a one-person organization called Reading Partners, and we funded it at SV2 in Silicon Valley in 2005. And that organization grew a little bit, and then the Social Venture Partnership in Sacramento funded it in 2008. And through the collective impact movement, it's actually on its own risen to be a national solution in literacy, but through the collective impact movement, it's now being pulled into Cincinnati because now they're figuring out how am I going to solve that fourth grade literacy problem in my community. And because that collective action is bubbling up in multiple cities, like in Dallas and like in Denver and like in Charlotte as three examples, where that organization now is in discussions with how can I launch that program in the next six to 12 months in those cities. So it really is important. I mean, this, this whole movement really integrates this whole idea of local with this whole idea of global solutions. Some solutions will have grown to a global scale where they can be implemented in multiple places. Otherwise, they have to be homegrown. And Jeff and I have made many discussions about what could the role that SVP could play in this. And I really think that we can borrow something that we've already done. Two years ago, we kicked off a forum, which was just a learning community, and it was for board chairs of all our individual SVPs, because we don't get to talk to each other. Okay, we only see each other once a year, and we're all reinventing the wheel on how do we recruit and how do we retain. So two years ago, we created a learning community, and two-thirds to three-quarters of all the chairs are on every call talking about best practices and what to learn and what's new and what works. So what we want to do as an outcome of this meeting is create that same kind of forum around collective impact. Okay, what can we do if we're implemented and playing any one of those roles Jeff talked about, from actually being the leadership in that role to being key conveners of the major funders, from helping the individual nonprofits. So this will be a forum for people to really think about at what scale do they want to play in their local community, and then for those people that are interested in kind of scaling some of those solutions that could be national, some of our best and brightest that have really grown, it's also a forum for that to come together. So this will really be about funding and scaling up, going deep in our communities, and also being able to go broad with individual nonprofits. And we'll be working with the EDs and the board chairs over the next month to kind of talk about how does it make the most sense to integrate with your particular city? At what levels would you like to think about? Who would be good people from your SVP to participate in this learning community? Which will probably will kick off on uh, November 17th. If you don't have a pen, no reason to write it down. It'll be in Rana's follow-up email. But I think it's really important that we start to get together collectively and think about what could be the next steps. And one of those next steps will be kind of related to the session we had before with this idea of taking a concept from the capital markets of a mezzanine fund with organizations that have grown to a certain scale and established proof that they're national level solutions and being able to fund those both with non-financial contributions but also with financial contributions. So I think we'll have these three key elements of a learning community of really a funding and a support vehicle for some of the best and the brightest, and also marketing the communications material so we can talk to people in our community who may not even know about us, who may actually want to be involved in collective impact from the funding community, from the business community. So I think, as Jeff mentioned, this organization at this time is so uniquely positioned because what it takes to execute this across the board are thousands of great people a geographical footprint in many dozens of major cities, and deep local and national and international networks. And hey, by the way, that's what we've got. So this is really our time. And I want to spend just a second connecting what I just said to what we've done in the last six months on a common brand and a common language. So we've spent a lot of time and involved everybody from the bottom up. And we've kind of asked ourselves, what the heck are we really doing here? And at what came out of that at the very core is this concept of what we're doing is unleashing human potential. We're giving people this opportunity to stretch. 
And it's happening in our partners, and we see it happening in our staff, and we see it happening in the nonprofits. We see it happening in our communities, and now we have such a great leverage point to go deeper in our communities, and we're seeing it happen in society as a whole. So it's this opportunity to unleash human potential in people, that there's this vast reservoir. And we do this by using this organization as a crucible for learning, experiential learning, trying, and stretching. So that core is unleashing potential, that next concentric circle is really this stretch, this opportunity to use this organization and this platform to stretch ourselves individually and now to see how we can stretch ourselves collectively. And then as we saw, that third concentric circle out from this is connecting. It's really that ability to work in co-creation, that ability to work in partnership. It's that common theme that we can do a lot alone, but we can never do alone what we could do together. So I think the way the branding is tying into everything else we've done is really quite amazing. So I want to close with just one thought. And, and Will left us in the branding work, for those of you who read it, his diagram of unleashing potential to stretching to connecting. He really talked about that as the ripple effect. Okay, it's just kind of wave upon wave as these things kind of interact with each other. And it's really driving kind of this next level impact in us individually okay, in us collectively in our cities as a network, but I think also in the field and the kind of language and the things that Jeff talked about. And I know from my personal experience that just, you know, helping build one great nonprofit, I've seen it create hundreds of jobs. I've seen it transform the lives of tens of thousands of people. And now we're talking about continuing to do that, but linking that together in a very thoughtful way to magnify our impact locally. And I tried to think about a quote that would put this in perspective, and, and I found one. And in 2005, right after Steve Jobs had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, he gave a commencement address at Stanford University. And in that commencement address, he tried to, to say, you know, what life meant to him. So let me read Steve's quote here. He said, remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. There is no reason not to follow your heart. So I wanna close with a question. Why don't we own up to our full potential? It's right before us. So in closing, I wanna both acknowledge and thank you for everything you have done. What you have done in this room is absolutely amazing. But now we need to challenge ourselves to what we can really do. Thank you.